Hi everyone, CEJ Photo here. I've been a Lens Baby Ambassador for a short while now, and one of the best things I've been able to do during this time is beta test a new lens. And Lens Baby said this lens would break the way we currently think about photography. So, challenge accepted. This is the Lens Baby Obscura. Take a good look at it. Cute, no? This is one of two versions of the Obscura. This is the 16mm pancake lens made for mirrorless cameras. There's also a 50mm optic version for DSLRs, but I'm going to focus on my experiences with the 16mm mirrorless version. Let's take a closer look. Technically, this is not a lens. It's based on a pinhole camera. It has three settings, and these settings are your apertures. This being lens baby, you know it's not going to be anything standard, right? Setting number one, the pinhole. A single pinhole which most closely replicates the look of a pinhole camera. On this lens, this setting represents f90. That's right, f90. This is what the images look like. It doesn't render fine detail, but it does have a lovely soft quality to the images that I personally find very pleasant. Next setting, this is called the pinhole sieve. This is f45. This aperture is a field of pinholes with the center being the largest. This is what the images look like. You can see it produces a lot of artifacts and a glow from light sources. If you zoom in, you can see that there is detail in the images, even though they appear blurry. Finally, the zone plate setting, f22. This aperture is a series of circular rings surrounding a larger central hole. This is what the images look like. You can see, similar to the pinhole sieve, it produces a lot of artifacts and a glow from light sources. But there is more central detail at this setting, and you can see this especially if you zoom in. Detail falls off around the edges of the image, and this is something I'm especially fond of in other lens baby lenses. Before you use the Obscura, you'll probably need to clean your sensor. Using such high f-stops makes dirt visible on your images, showing as dark blobs in lighter areas. Make sure you have the right tools for cleaning your sensor, or get it cleaned at your local camera store. One of the first things you may notice about this lens is that there is no focus control. Having such large f-stops means pretty much everything is in focus. You'll get the most control over your images with your camera set to full manual, so you can control shutter speed and ISO settings. With higher apertures, less light enters the camera, so you'll need to compensate with longer shutter speeds or a higher ISO. If you are using longer shutter speeds, best to brace yourself against something solid, or use a tripod or other camera support. Otherwise, throw in a bit of intentional camera movement and see what you get. Shorten your shutter speeds by increasing the ISO, and embrace the noise. Try converting your images to black and white to get that film look. Pinhole photography typically captures stationary subjects and landscapes. At 16mm focal length, this is a very wide angle which will produce image distortion that you can use creatively. You're probably not going to be using this lens to freeze action shots, but pretty much anything else is worth experimenting with. I've tried shooting upwards with my camera on the ground or on a tripod, and the wide angle coupled with the very large depth of field of this lens has given me some really interesting results. I found that just a few simple post-processing edits can really enhance the image and bring it to life. I personally prefer to underexpose with the zone plate setting, bringing up the exposure in post-processing, which I find gives me a good balance of glow and detail. As a portrait photographer, I have my go-to lenses and go-to settings. With less available for me to change on the Obscura, it has challenged me to photograph differently and also to embrace elements that I might normally shun. So there you are, the Lensbaby Obscura. Challenge yourself.